Pre-visualization, or pre -vis, is the process of visualizing the angles and camera moves you'll be employing ahead of the actual shoot. This can dramatically reduce the amount of time wasted on set establishing the appropriate framing and can head off catastrophic situations like showing up to set without the right lenses for the space. The problem with previs is that it's traditionally cost a lot of money, even for simple projects. Well, thanks to Moviola and the good people at Epic Games, not anymore. Unreal Engine is a highly regarded game engine and the basis for many large-scale commercial video game projects. It has a sophisticated camera and lighting system, and so it's ideal for previs work. Best of all, it's free for non-game development purposes. Well, it's free if you want to make games too, you just have to pay a royalty when you start shipping your game. Now, we're not going to lie to you, Unreal Engine is a deep and complicated app. But this guide is specifically focused only on getting you up and pre-visualizing. So stick to our safety rails and don't be distracted by all the other bells and whistles. By the time we're done, you'll know exactly what you need to create first-class previs for your next shoot. Okay, start by downloading the Epic Games Launcher from UnrealEngine.com. You'll first need to create a free account so that the good people at Epic can fill your inbox with special and exciting offers. Once it's installed, go ahead and open the Epic Games Launcher and then log in with the account you just created. Once you're set up and signed in, click Unreal Engine. Here, you can download Unreal Engine. Now, at the time we recorded this, Unreal Engine 4.18.2 was the current release. Now for what we're doing, later versions will probably still look and behave just the same. But if you want to make sure your screen always looks like ours as you work through this video, download the 4.18.2 release by going to the library section of the launcher, clicking Add Versions, and selecting it from the list. Once it's downloaded and installed, simply click Launch to start. Before we do, let's take a look at one handy resource here in the Epic Games launcher. Click to the marketplace and you'll find a bunch of content you can add to your project, some free, some for purchase. Unreal Engine includes some useful content for previs right in the standard installer, but it's a good idea to add additional props like chairs, tables, and lamps to help create a concrete visualization. They don't have to be identical to the actual props you'll use on the set, but as long as they roughly match them in size and function, they'll do a much better job of accurately representing the final shot than just using some simple box shapes. Let's get started. We'll focus here on interiors, since they require a little more setup. We'll take a look at exterior previs in a later series. Now this video assumes you've already built the basic version of your set using our SketchUp training. Now it's time to bring it into Unreal and do some set design. Launch the engine version you want to work with, either the latest version or the version 4.18.2 like us. We'll create a new project and choose a blueprint project with the blank template. Remember, we warned you, Unreal Engine is a deep app, and we're here to teach you previs, not game design. So those of you with ADD will have to satisfy your curiosity about all those other options another time. Make sure the options at the bottom are set to desktop console, maximum quality, and with starter content. Choose a file location and name, and then click Create Project. Now there's an annoying flashy thing in the top right corner. That's Unreal's default tutorials trying to guide you through the application for the first time. Now you can always return to those later, but for now, stop the flashing before it drives you crazy. Select it, then choose Exit from the top right corner of the guide window that appears. We'll get to the interface in a moment, but let's start with some basic navigation. Right click and drag to rotate the view as if you were moving your head. Hold down the middle mouse to dolly the virtual camera. It's the camera you're moving and not the world, which is why the scenery moves in the opposite direction to your mouse movement. Now, for those of you familiar with 3D software like Cinema 4D or Maya, this is the opposite of what you're used to. You can invert the direction by choosing Edit, Editor Preferences, Level Editor, Viewports, and then selecting Inverse Middle Mouse Pan. 
Now the scenery will follow the mouse direction as if you were moving the whole world and not the camera you're viewing through. So we have right click to rotate, middle mouse to pan, and finally scroll wheel to zoom in and out. If you go a little crazy and get completely lost, just press the number one key to jump to the default center bookmark. If you're a gamer, you can also navigate by holding down the right mouse button and using the standard first person shooter keys, Q, W, E, A, S, and D. If you find the camera is moving too fast, you can change the speed at the top right of the viewer. We'll change it back. At top right, you'll see the world outliner. This is a list of everything in your scene. You can use this to focus the scene view on a specific object. For example, select one of the chairs and press the F key to frame the chair in the view. To pivot around the chair, you can hold down the Alt key and left drag on the mouse. Zooming out a little, you'll see a few other icons. These are mainly to do with lighting and gameplay, so they don't concern us. What we'll do is group them all together so we can delete them later once we have our scene set up. Right click on Minimal Default at the top of the World Outliner and choose Create Folder. Call it Starter Content and then drag all the other elements into it. Click the Disclosure Triangle to show or hide them from view. Time to bring in our SketchUp set. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see the Content Browser. Right now, there's just a folder with the starter content Unreal Engine created with our default project. We need to create another folder to organize the set we're about to import. Right-click, choose New Folder, and call the folder SketchUp Set. Double-click into the new folder, and then click Import. Locate that FBX we exported from SketchUp, and click Open. We don't want to import the weird and wonderful collection of materials or textures we created in SketchUp, so deselect both those options. You can leave the rest of the options at their defaults and click Import. Now the import will produce a bunch of warnings. You can ignore them and close the log window since they're most likely about parts of the model we won't even be viewing. Depending on how you exported your model to FBX, you may end up with a dozen or so individual pieces of geometry like we have here. That's okay. Just click on the first piece and then shift click on the last and drag them all together into the viewer. While they're still selected in the world outliner, let's center them in the scene. In the details pane, double click the X, Y, and Z location fields in turn and zero them out. Finally, Press the F key to frame all the selected elements in the viewer. Use the right mouse, middle mouse, and scroll wheel shortcuts to navigate around the set and pay attention to the size of the chairs and table that came with the default Unreal project. They should seem to be an appropriate scale. Sometimes imported FBXs will be off scale by 10 or even 100, so we'll make sure everything's precisely lined up before we move on. In our SketchUp previous video, we noted that wall-to-wall -wall in the main room, our model was exactly 35 feet. A quick trip to Google tells us that's 10.668 meters. Let's head over to the Modes pane, the one section of the default interface we haven't yet visited. In here, you'll find some basic building blocks for creating scenes. Then from the Basic tab, drag a cube into the center of the room. The cube is exactly one meter wide. We'll change its X scale to 10.668 since the X axis is the direction that has the 35 foot distance wall to wall. We can click and drag the arrows to move the cube into line with each wall. And sure enough, it's a perfect fit. So our FBX imported to the correct scale after all. While we're talking about X, Y, and Z, Unreal uses X for left to right, Y for forward and backward, and Z for up and down. Now that's at odds with a lot of other apps where Y is the vertical axis and Z is depth. Just something to get used to here in Unreal. Now that we've confirmed that the scale is right, we'll go ahead and get rid of the cube by pressing the delete key. 
we'll also right click to add a new folder in the outliner and call it main set. Then we'll drag all our bits of wall and floor into the folder and close it up. This way it's easier to keep everything together. In the SketchUp video, we created cavities for walls and doors, but no actual frames. Let's add those now. Unreal's starter content includes basic window and door frames. In the content browser, click the breadcrumb trail at the top to move back up to the content folder and then double click into starter content and then props. Before we add them, let's get rid of the unneeded default objects in the scene. Click to select each object and press delete. Now grab a door frame and drag it into the scene. Move it close to one of the door cavities. Once it's in place, you can grab the arrows of the 3D Move widget to shift it around. Unreal Engine automatically snaps to units, which isn't really helpful here while we're trying to line things up, so you can disable snapping for translation here or change the snap resolution via the menu next to it. In Unreal, you switch between translation, rotation, and scale tools using either the buttons at the top of the viewer or the W, E, and R keys respectively. We need to rotate the door frame, so we'll press E to switch to the Rotate tool and snap to a 90 degree rotation. Then we'll press W to switch back to the Move tool and position the frame in the doorway. The frame is a little narrow for our door, so we'll press R to switch to the Scale tool, scale it a little wider, and then press W again and move it into place. Repeat the process to add an actual door. Just be careful to match the hinge direction with that of the real-world door you're trying to represent, as that could dramatically affect your ability to squeeze a camera into the space. Remember, by the way, you can press F to frame the viewer around the selected item, and then Alt-Left drag to pivot around it. Remember, the primary purpose of Previs is to accurately represent the live action set, including any limitations the space imposes like the door direction. Now we'll add a window. You might want to turn off snapping for scale just like we did for translation. You can add a pane of glass to your window if you like. We'll just leave ours as empty frames for now. Now that we have one window sized, it'd be nice to be able to copy and paste it rather than have to resize all over again on the next one. In Unreal Engine, just Option or Alt drag the Move tool to copy and move a duplicate of any object. Just remember to release the Alt key for additional position tweaks or you'll end up creating more windows than you need. Go ahead and fit out the rest of the room. To copy doors, you'll need to select the door frame and then shift click the door to select it as well before Alt dragging out the copy. For these French doors, we'll deselect the copied door and then scale out the frame. It looks a little unnatural with the width of the side columns, but it'll have to do, unless we want to spend time in a 3D modeling package. Okay, time to add some materials to all those blank checkered surfaces. Click the breadcrumb trail to hop back up to the main starter content folder and then double click into materials. We'll start with the material basic wall, but so that we can customize it, right click on its tile and choose Duplicate. Rename the duplicate underscore wall color one. By adding the underscore at the beginning, we're forcing the material to appear at the top of the materials list, making it easy to find our custom materials when we need them. Now just drag wall color one onto one of your walls. Let's change the color. Double click your duplicated material. The window you see is what Unreal calls a blueprint, a node graph representing different surface properties of our material. Right click and drag to move about. You can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out. Don't worry about all the detail here. All we care about is changing the color. Double click the node labeled color and then use the color picker to choose your new color. Often your main scene won't update right away, so you'll need to click the apply button. Once you're happy, close the node view. Drag and drop to apply the material to any other walls you want. 
Let's duplicate our wall material again and create an accent color. We'll drag and drop the accent color onto an accent wall, and we'll also use it on the door and window frames of the main walls for contrast. Now let's pick a material for the floor. We'll duplicate this walnut polished wood, rename it, and then drag it onto the floor plane. Right away, we can see that the floorboards are far too big. It looks like they're about 10 times too big. Double click the material to make changes to it. Now, remember when we told you that Unreal Engine is a deep application? Well, it is. Believe it or not, though, this is quite a small blueprint. Blueprints can grow to hundreds of nodes for very complex gaming projects. What we care about, though, is just resizing the tiling of the floorboards. If you right-click and drag to the left, you'll discover a texture coordinate node. In some materials, unfortunately, there may be several of these to tweak. In this one, we got lucky. There's only one. Select it, and in the Details pane, increase the U and V tiling to increase the number of times the floor plank pattern repeats in width and depth. Since it looks like the pattern is off by a factor of 10, we'll increase the numbers from 0.5 to 5. Move the window and click Apply to look at the main scene. You can continue to make changes until you're happy, although the value of 5 looks good here, so we'll close the Blueprint view and return to the main scene view. You may notice the original ground plane grid shimmering and competing with the floor. To turn it off, just disable the grid from the Show menu. You may have also noticed while working a red warning about lighting needing to be rebuilt. Unreal Engine creates some effects in real time, like the reflections we see in the floorboards, but others it calculates ahead of time to create more accurate lighting. To recalculate the lighting after making changes to the shot, click the arrow to the right of Build and choose Build Lighting Only. Unreal rebakes the lighting effects to the current scene and textures. You'll see Baking Progress indicated at lower right. The final step in setting up your previs is a little set design. Going back to the Starter Content Props folder, you'll see there are a few basic props beyond the windows and doors but unless your story involves boulders having existential conversations with glass statues, you're unlikely to find everything you need. Time for a trip to the store. Alt-Tab on a PC, Command-Tab on a Mac, back to the Epic Games Launcher, and visit the Marketplace. As we showed before, you can select the Architectural Visualization category and find a veritable plethora of furniture. You can set the filter to free, but you're unlikely to find a whole lot. However, if you're willing to part with $10 to $15 US, you'll find all kinds of great collections to help you kit out your scene. And check back often. Items are frequently on sale at 50 to 60% off their regular price. After purchasing collections, you'll find them ready to download in your library. Once downloaded, just click Add to Project, select your project, and click Add to Project again you'll now find the items added as a separate folder in your project's content directory. Just drag into the scene and position like any other element. Most of them will already have materials applied, and many will include alternate materials to go with different color schemes. And that's a wrap. Remember to rebuild the lighting from time to time as you make changes to the scene. And to keep things tidy, let's create two additional folders in our World Outliner, one for doors and windows, and the other for props. Coming up next, time to add some actors to our scene before we throw in our lights and cameras.